we have seen various forces acting on and reciprocating engine and also I have derived the expressions for each and every force acting on the various parts of the IC engine which were presented in our previous video. In this video, let us solve a numerical problem on dynamic force analysis of reciprocating engine, horizontal reciprocating engine without considering the weight of the connecting rod. We will be solving it by analytical method. So let's get started. Hi, uh, welcome to my channel. It's Dr. V. Jayakumar. I'm making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. If this is your first time or not yet subscribed, please press the subscribe button and also the bell icon so that to get notified all my forthcoming videos. If you could be able to watch this video till the end, you should be able to solve a numerical problem in which we can find various forces acting on a horizontal IC engine, right? So before that, I strongly recommend you to watch my previous video on dynamic force analysis of IC engine, wherein the detailed derivation on various forces are given. I tell you, without knowing the derivation, it's not advisable to get down with the solving the problem. But this is the recap. So these are the notations uh, that we have been using consistently. I am going to use the same notation while solving the problem as well. Okay. Yes, these are the various equations that we have derived for us. The most important one will be acceleration of the piston equation which we will be using while solving this problem. Yes, this diagram talks about horizontal IC engine in which various forces are acting on it. Various forces are represented in red lines. For the force analysis, many notations are being used. I call WR as the weight of the piston reciprocating parts. MR is the mass of the reciprocating parts. FI is the inertia force given by the piston. FL, net load acting on the piston. FQ, force acting along the connecting rod. Then it will have two components. One is perpendicular to the crank. We call it as a crank pin effort, FT. Another one is a force parallel to the crank, which we denote by the notation FQ. Then finally, T is nothing but turning moment of the crankshaft, which can be obtained by FT into R. Right? Yes, let us jump on to the problem. Let us read the problem carefully. So, given data is horizontal steam engine running at 210 RPM as a bore of 190 mm and stroke of 350 mm. The piston rod is 20 mm in diameter and the connecting rod length is 950 mm. Mass of the reciprocating parts is 8 kg and the frictional resistance is equal to a force of 350 Newton. Determine the following when the crank is at 115 degree from inner dead center. The mean pressure on the cover end being 4500 Newton per meter square, whereas on the crank side pressure is 100 Newton per meter square. So these are the data given. Let me write that. So they are given RPM. So bore, piston outer diameter is known as bore. Then stroke of the engine is given. You know that see the distance covered between IDC to ODC is known as stroke. So in order to cover that distance, crank should have rotated 180 degrees. So that means in terms of the distance, it is equal to 2R. 
So in other words, we could say stroke is equal to two times the crank radius. So my dear students, whenever they give you the data stroke, please understand that they indirectly give you the value of crank radius. Next, they have given piston rod dia. So this is not piston dia. Piston dia already given bow. This is piston rod dia, which I represent it by small letter D. Connecting rod length is given, which is nothing but L. The mass of the reciprocating parts, which is nothing but mass of the piston, I call it as M suffix R, is 8 kg. Here they have given you frictional resistance when the piston moves. So we could call RF or frictional force, F suffix F is given. You know that all the force values are changing depending upon the position of the crank. That's the reason why they're asking you the answer at one particular crank position. So when theta equal to 115 degree from IDC, they need at that particular position, what are the various forces? Is that clear? When theta equal to 115 degree, they have given a pressure on both sides of the piston is given. Towards the cylinder head, we call it as a cover side. The side towards crank is known as crank side pressure. Is it clear? So I use the notation P1 for the pressure on the cover side, then P2, crank side pressure, right? Now, what are the things we need to determine? We need to determine thrust on the connecting rod, that is FQ. Thrust on the side walls, which is nothing but normal reaction, you know, exerted by the cylinder on the walls, F suffix N. Load on the bearings, F suffix B. Finally, they need turning moment T. These are the various data given. So, what we should be finding? Any doubt on the question? Uh, before going to the solution, we need to find uh, some common uh, findings. For example, for my things, I need omega angular velocity of the crank. We know the formula 2 pi n by 60, 21.99 radians per second. I need obliquity ratio, which is nothing but ratio between the length of the connecting rod and crank radius. We call it as L by R ratio 5.43. When theta is given, how to find phi? Remember this diagram. From this right angle triangle, I can write this side as R sine theta is equal to now, using this right angle triangle, I can write L sine phi. So, substituting the given value of theta, 115 degree, and uh, N value, we could be able to get phi value. Before starting, you should know the meaning of piston effort. Piston effort is nothing but net force acting on the piston. So what are the force acting on the piston? So IDC to ODC or 0 to 180 degree, we call it as piston is accelerating. When piston is accelerating, in the opposite direction, inertia force would be acting. So this is piston. So this is my EFL, direction of piston is this. When piston moves in this direction during acceleration, you know that in the opposite direction, the inertia force of the piston will be acting. And also, if frictional force is given, that also will act in the opposite direction. Then what is the net force acting on the piston during acceleration? 
this is during acceleration position here theta is equal to 115 degree so piston accelerates so this equation is valid so to find fp i will be determining fl and fi is that clear so first let us find fl if you take a piston as i said here there will be a pressure on cover side similarly this is a double acting ic engine so pressure on both ends will be considered similarly there will be pressure on the other end as well which we call it as a crank side pressure p2 so they are given both the pressure this is what we call cylinder bore this dia is what we call piston rod dia so pressure is exerting on the piston head on the circular cross section we know that pressure multiplied by a1 minus pressure multiplied by a2 or in other words this side area i have to consider as p1 multiplied by pi by 4 d square because this is pressure acting on the piston minus that side pressure i have to deduce area of cross section of the rod small rod piston rod alone that i have to deduce right so that's why minus what is the area of the at uh, this one that is pi by 4 i use the notation small d so small d square okay so by substituting the given data we will get answer 124.77 newton is the fl okay we know that inertia force of the piston mass of the piston multiplied by acceleration of the piston formula for acceleration of the piston as like this so in this formula all data are known so i am substituting all the known values and by simplification i will get the inertia force value right having known now fl and fi value i think now we can go back to the piston effort formula and substitute them there you are on simplification we get piston effort as 141.01 newton okay the first answer we are looking forward is to determine thrust along the connecting rod fq see the diagram here this force diagram so i know phi i know fp this is fp using this trigonometry we can easily find fq value we know that fq is equal to fp by cos phi so on substitution and simplification i get fq as 143.02 newton so this is one answer now we will move on to the second question thrust on the side walls this is what we are talking about so which is nothing but normal reaction exerted by the cylinder walls on the piston we know that fn is equal to fp into tan phi 141.01 multiplied by tan what is that 9.61 degree so we are getting the answer as 23.81 newton so this is my record answer number 2 what is the load on the bearing so this is the load on the bearing we know that fb is equal to fq into cos theta plus phi how to get this equation please you have to refer to the previous derivation video that will give you the answer for that okay 
So on simplification, we will get the FB value like this, minus 81.23. Shall we go to the final record answer? Turning moment on the crankshaft. So we know that turning moment is equal to force perpendicular force component of the FQ multiplied by radius R. We know that formula for FT, FT is FP by cos phi multiplied by sin theta plus phi. This is the equation for FT. How? Please watch the derivation video. Okay. So I can write this equation now as now I can substitute all the given data. There you are. So we got the final turning moment of the crank as 20.6 Newton meter. Uh, that's it. Hope you understood this problem clearly. I have given you a horizontal steam engine problem for your practice. So solve one way own using the same technique. Check your answer there. So there you are. In our next video, we will solve another numerical problem but on a vertical reciprocating engine. That's it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.